the diversity of conversation, that's, that's not enough. Diversity is we've got, you know, all men panel and one woman, you know, uh, but belonging would be, you know, facilitating a conversation, whether it's a different lineup or the topics that, you know, allow the minority of the group to feel, oh, okay, I'm supposed to be here, I'm supposed to contribute to what's going Where on. Where do you draw a line between belonging and inclusion? Because I hear DNI, diversity and inclusion. Yeah. Where, where, why do you pick the word belonging over inclusion? I think it's all one portfolio. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think, oh, you have to start with diversity and then be inclusive and then people can feel like they belong. But it's, it's all at once. You know, you should be looking at the whole package. You know, we've got a diverse lineup and that lineup is inclusive in the way that we were talking about this as we were getting set up, the temperature in here. You know, we want to make sure it's not too cold but not too hot because everyone kind of has what works for them in a, in a different way. So when we're, you know, having those types of conversations and then again going to the belonging aspect of like but the key thing am is I it's drawn not sequencing in for you. No, I don't no, it's not a, a you know, one after the other. It's right. the whole suite and you lay it all out like a full on strategy, a full on portfolio. We uh, had another event recently in the summer. Uh, we had Emily Chang from Bloomberg mm. come and speak. Um, I, I interviewed her and about her book Brotopia. And um, I mean, I came away from that feeling personally very kind of discouraged, the awfulness of the IT industry that she calls out in some you know, pretty graphic detail. Uh, it felt to me pretty endemic and structural. Um, do you see it that way? Do, I mean, have, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book, but it's-, it's Oh, I read it yeah. and I thought it was uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and she paints a picture of, of the tech world that I grew up in. I had mm -hmm. two startups um, over the past 10 years that were both venture backed. One was in Silicon Valley and one in New York. And it is, it is endemic mm -hmm. um, succinctly. I will say that new laws are coming into play that I think are um, inspiring and uplifting and others might push back. In California, as of this month, it's mandated that there must be one woman on every board of director right. for every publicly listed company in the state. Mm -hmm. And now they're being sued, the state of California is being sued by an all-male board, mm -hmm. in, interestingly. Uh, that feels like um, that's a discrimination against um, all male boards. Um, I would like to see that law go e even further. I'd like to see it include um, diverse candidates. I mean, yes, uh, gender disparity is a problem. Uh, in technology in particular, only 25% of the industry is made up of women. So um, I could wax poetic about this for a long time, but I'd like to see more mandates like what's happening in California take place. And I, I'd also like to see um, in the venture industry, LP dollars being controlled, uh, that would be limited partner dollars being controlled by women. It's something that's rarely talked about, but in university endowments make up the majority of the money that's trickled down into venture firms like the one I raised. Mm -hmm. And um, those venture capital firms are largely also made up by men and that trickles down into the individuals who uh, comprise of their portfolio. So at Trail Mix, we're proud that 65% of our portfolio are founders that are uh, women and or minorities.